y'all. I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com. And today I have an envelope mini album tutorial for you. So this is the mini album that I made for a beach trip this summer. Um, I am excited to fill it in. I have all my pictures printed out, ready to just put on these gorgeous pages and embellish. I just need to find the time to sit down and do it. I had several of you request how um, that I create a video on how I made this mini album. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, we'll make it pretty simple. The things that you're going to need. This is a random box. You can use a cereal box, whatever boxes you have laying around. Um, this is the box that I was able to find in our pantry that I could use. So I have a box. I have some fabric. I have some double-sided paper. So I'm going to use my Cricut Maker to cut out envelopes. You can also pre-purchase envelopes and I'll talk about that later. Um, I like using double-sided paper for cutting out envelopes because it creates just a fun effect in your book when you're opening the different envelopes um, and I like that extra burst of pattern there. So I have some paper picked out, some scissors, and some Fabri-Tac glue. Some optional things would be a sewing machine or um, the ability to hand stitch around your album and then you're also going to need some thread right here. This is waxed thread that's used for book binding. So I will show you all of those other tools as we go but here are some of the basics. Um, I will link things down below if you're interested in checking out some of the different tools that I used or the materials I used. Otherwise, let's go! Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is create the envelopes that I plan to use in my mini album. That will help me determine the size that my mini album is going to be. You can also work in the other direction. So if you cut out your album first, your album cover, then you will know what size you need your envelopes. For me, it's easier to do the envelopes first. Um, that way I know what I can fit in and how big my cover will be. So I'm going to click here. I've already pre made my envelopes. These are the ones that I did um, for the previous project, so I saved it. If you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, you can certainly go to the different design softwares, and there's a lot of envelope templates to choose from. Um, so what I did was bringing this in. I have my envelope all um, fit onto a 12 by 12 paper, and the other option that I added were these extra little shapes. I wanted to see what I could fit all on a 12 by 12 paper so I didn't waste any of the paper. So I have my envelope. It's as big as it can get pretty much. And then I brought in these other pieces. You can choose any envelope template. So let me show you what Cricut has to offer. I can come over to images right here and then I can just type in envelope and there are 6,500 results. So there's all different kinds. There's some scalloped envelopes. There's just lots of pretty edges. You could change it up. You could do a different envelope for each page. There, it, The options are pretty much limitless. And so just come in and look for what works for you, what works for your type of album. There's tons and tons and tons of options. I wanted a relatively plain, simple looking envelope. So that's why I chose the one I did, but you can look and find one that you like. Okay, I have all my shapes here ready to go. So I'm gonna click make it. And you see, it sorted it out into two different papers. That is not what I want. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to simply click these three little dots on each image. So you click those and it says move object and I want to move it to this one. So I'll take this and I'm just going to shift it and put it down here. And I'll do the same with my other shape. So I'll move object, move it over here and you can see I can get it in. Let's see, this one I think I have to rotate. Let's see. Moving that so it fits in still. Let's see what other objects we have. We're going to move that object. Oh, move object. There we go. And I'll put that one right up here. And then one more move object to here. 
and we will shift that one right there. So I have all of them on one paper so I can get the most. You can see I could probably cut out another little square right here or something right here. So that's up to you. Fit as much as you can on your paper, especially if you're using up some 12 by 12s. And then I will press continue and it will connect to my maker and we will get cutting. You want to make sure to select the appropriate material. In this, in this case, we're doing heavy cardstock. I always press the more button and you can see it's going to require two different tools. So it's going to require the double scoring wheel in one and then it'll switch tools to the fine point blade partway through. That's for the scoring marks that are on my envelope. So I will get all ready and we will go. Okay, so as I get set with my maker, I need to swap out the blade. So I have my fine point blade in here. I'm going to take it out. I'll just set it over here in my tool kit where I keep all of my blades. And then I'm going to insert my scoring blade right in there. It's pretty easy to switch them out. I have my paper. I'm using a light grip mat, so I will pull that off and then just load up my paper getting it all set and ready to go. This is a sticky new mat. So let me get this situated in a straight way and we'll get ready to cut. Okay, we are all ready to cut. So all you have to do is click load. And then when it's ready, you click the make it button and it will go and do the scoring first. All right, so it's completed the scoring on my computer screen. It's telling me to swap out the blades. So I will do that back to my fine point blade and then it will do the cutting. My first sheet is all done, so I'm just going to unload. I will take these pieces off the mat and then I will go ahead and cut the rest of my paper so I'm ready to go. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do, I have all my envelopes cut out. I'm going to cut out a couple of folders that will also be included in the album. Um, I'm going to do cut at eight and a half inches because that is four and a quarter times two. So that will be the width. So we'll do eight and a half. And then the height is five and a half, but I want to be able to fold it up. So I'm actually going to cut at eight and a half. So eight and a half by eight and a half. So we will cut our second one. Eight and a half by eight and a half. So I have my two inside folders and we will start scoring. Okay, I have my scoring tool and my bone folder right here for the folders. The first thing I'm going to do is score at four and a quarter. That will be the middle fold of the folder, just going over a couple of times. And then we will score right at three inches. That's where it will fold up. So for this folder, I will take it, we'll fold up right on that score line, have it all set right there, and then just use my bone folder to press it down, make sure it's nice and crisp. So we have that, and then we will score in the middle right here, again on the score line that we already put there, using our bone folder to press it down and make it nice and crisp and we can sew around the edges to secure our folder but we'll have it ready to go. I'll do that with my second one. So again we're going to take our paper, we're going to score at four and a quarter right down the middle and then we're going to score at three inches for our little fold up there. I have that ready to go. So I will use my bone folder again to make sure it's nice and crisp. 
and then fold it to the inside. And my two folders are ready to go. And let's talk about these envelopes. So we have our envelopes that we cut out with our Cricut. What you need to decide is what color you want showing. So for this envelope in particular, I have my score line. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold and fold and fold. So I have my envelope ready to go. I'll use my bone folder to crisp up all those folds. You do not want to secure your envelope down. Do not add any adhesive yet. All you want to do is score your envelopes. Do not add adhesive yet because it will be easier to sew together to bind into your album and then add the adhesive later. So score all of your envelopes. You'll have your stack ready to go. Okay, we have our stack of envelopes and folders. The next thing is to take a look at our box. So you can use any sort of box you have around. You're gonna wanna open it up fully like this. And then I'm just going to cut very carefully down the side right here. So cutting right down here so that it's fully opened. There. Okay, so I have my fully open box and what I want is the front, the longer side because that's where my envelopes will fit in nicely. One of the sides and the back. So I can trim off, for instance, this piece right here can come off. And then also I trim off all of these flaps and one more top flap perfect and that flap right here That is my basic cover. I'm going to move the extras to the side. And then the other thing I want to do right now is to create a template for what the spine of this album looks like. So I'm just cutting this piece of paper as close as I can to be a template. And this is gonna help with um, when I add my spacing guidelines later for adhering my envelope. So just trimming out maybe just a little bit more on this side. Okay, that is going to help later when I'm adding holes and such into my album. Okay. I got this. I'm actually going to turn it inside out. I want the brown on the outside just because I think it's easier to cover. Red is pretty impactful. And the other thing I'm going to do is I am going to actually add a second layer here in the inside. So I'm going to pull up this piece right here. I don't need that, but I do want this and this. So I'm adding a second layer just to give some extra strength to the spine because it'll have the binding going through it and I want it to be nice and strong. I'm going to take my Fabri-Tac glue and for this glue I'm going to spread it running low on Fabri-Tac. All right, I'm going to spread it. I don't need a ton. Spread it around and then just use my finger to make sure it's a really pretty thin layer. And then adhere that right there. Okay, so now we have our 
base of our album and we're going to want to work on covering the album. Okay, the first thing I want to do for covering my album is cover the inside spine. So I'm just cutting a strip that will be a little bit bigger than the spine and then I will adhere that down and that'll help to make kind of a cleaner look on the inside once I'm done so that the spine is covered so you don't see the um, brown coming through. We'll do it on this side. Again, what I want to do is take the Fabri-Tac and go ahead and apply that. And I want to make sure that I use my finger or a brush of some sort to make sure that it's a thin layer. And then I will place this over the top and very carefully. Now, you're wanting to try to avoid those glue marks of the glue soaking through, hence the thin layer that we were trying to work with there. Okay, from here, I'll just trim this off this will be covered by our next round of glue. Trimming this off right here. Okay, so that is our inside. I'm gonna add just a little bit more glue underneath the edges to make sure it's secure. And then we'll be ready to go to the outside. All right, so now we're gonna work on the outside cover. I've trimmed my fabric and I've left just a little bit of an edge, maybe three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna come with my Fabri-Tac again. Hopefully I have enough to finish this project. And I'm going to add the Fabri-Tac along the whole project. Again, same deal. I'm gonna use my finger to kind of spread it out just so that it stays nice and thin. I wanna make sure to get the edges really well, for sure. Turn those down. And then all I have to do is flip, kind of center it up, and then make sure that it is nice and secure and that the album will still close like that. Okay, next step on wrapping our cover is actually gonna be to go to the corner. So I'm gonna come to this corner right here and I'm gonna come in at a 45 degree angle and glue down that corner. I'm gonna do the same over here, gluing that down. This will make it possible for us to have a pretty fold in the corners. So you just want that corner glued down nicely. All right, I'm gonna give those a chance to get set and then we'll start our folding process. Okay, for the edges here, I'm going to add my line of Fabri-Tac down all the way here, again with the finger, spreading it thin and then pulling this over, really focusing on getting that line in the corners and then pressing down and I can just hold it right there for a second so that it is adhered really well. And then I will do the same on some of the longer sections.
Okay, so I have the base of my cover ready to go. Um, the next thing that I want to do is to run it through my sewing machine. So I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine, run around the edges of the cover just to add a stitched look. You do not have to do this step, just something I like to do. And then we will work on covering the inside right here. Okay, so we have our two pieces that will go on the inside. I did add stitching to those as well. All I'm gonna do is add a little bit of glue to the back of those pieces, possibly, and then adhere them down and again, just want to make sure it's at the very edges, just so it's nice and uh, glued down. So adding some liquid glue. I would definitely stick with liquid glue for this project, just because I think it's going to hold better in the long run as you are working um, with the album. And leave the tape runner aside for this one. So adding that one down and then you can see how it covers that inside just a bit. We'll add the same over here. Almost. And we have that down on this side. And our little album cover is ready to go nice and clean. Okay, so you might want to go and press this somewhere just to make sure it stays nice and adhered while it dries. And then we'll work on the template for the inside spine. All right, so now is the point where it's gonna be some math. I have 11 inserts, which is my envelopes and my folders, and I want them to be spaced evenly. So my spine is three and a quarter, so I'm gonna to come to one, a little bit over one and a half, and I'm gonna add my first line. Then on either side of that line, I need five and I don't want it to go all the way to the edge so I'm actually going to kind of move it over from the edge just a bit on this side and move it over from the edge just a bit on this side as well. Now spacing doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but you do want it to be as even as you can. Then I'll kind of divide, let's see, I have three, now I need four in between each of these. So I want to kind of divide it out, adding in four more lines. So if I do one, two, three, four, that's pretty good. And then we'll do the same over here. One, two, three, Four, and that'll give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven lines. So that'll be perfect. I'm going to add in all of my straight lines and then we'll talk about measuring out where my holes will be going. Okay, so I have my lines. Now I want to measure where all of my dots or my punches are going to go. So I'm going to come in an inch this direction. We'll do an inch on this side so I can match those up. And then we'll do the same the other direction. So I'm going to come in an inch and an inch like that. And then I can just connect those lines. And then I'll come in to the middle. So right in between these lines. So they are four and a quarter. So right here. And that'll be... Okay, so I will be able to use this as my template 
or punching holes in my actual album. Okay, I have the binding tool from We Are Memory Keepers. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my template and I'm gonna use some clips to hold it in place to make sure it's not going to move. And then all I have to do from this point is take my awl and I'm simply going to punch a hole straight through a little thick but straight through where each of those lines intersect so be careful of your finger in the back but these are just prepping those holes for the binding later on so going through and punching all of the holes all the way through you can see it's kind of coming through the back I probably need to go a little bit more to make sure it's coming through the back of the fabric Okay, I think my video cut off, so let me show you one more time how I did this. So I take my envelope, I'm using my template here, I'm centering it up to my eye, measuring where my holes are going to go. So a hole here, here, and here. Then I'm going to punch through hole and here. And lastly, here. Then I'm going to grab my waxed thread. So this is binding thread. You can pick this up on Amazon. I chose yellow. I bought a whole set with all of the different colors, which is a lot of fun to use. Um, I'm gonna thread my binding needle. Okay, and I'm ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've done two envelopes already. I'm going to go through the center of my envelope, that center hole, do not pull all the way through. I'm going to find the center hole, the very next one in my pattern and pull through that, which will bring the two together. Again, leave that tail inside. Then I'm going to go to the top and I'm gonna find the next hole that I've already pre-punched in the top of my album. I'm gonna put my needle through, finding that hole, there it is. And then, as I pull that through, I'll find the top hole of my envelope, right here, pull that through, and now it's attached right there. I've done the first leg up there. Now I come back through that center hole. I've already gone through it once. I'm coming back through, avoiding the string that's already in there and coming back through. Again, making sure I hold on to that tail so it doesn't get pulled through. So I'm going to pull it pretty, pretty snug. Now I'm going through the bottom hole down here, being very careful to make sure I get the correct hole coming through this way and pulling that nice and snug. And I will tie a knot and I will try to make sure it stays nice and firm as I'm pulling it tight. And I'll do a double knot just because that is firm. Snip snip and now you can see that my envelope is attached in there. I can add a little bit of adhesive so what I want to do is just add a really thin strip right here, thin strip right here, got that, and got that. And then I can just grab a couple paper clips to make sure that my envelope stays closed as it is drying. And there we go. So I have three envelopes and I like to follow the pattern, three envelopes, then a folder. I'll run this through my sewing machine, then three envelopes and a folder ending with three envelopes. Just to change it up, you could do all envelopes if you like as well.
All right, so here is my completed mini album. It is chunky. It is a chunky album. But what is fun about that is you can go crazy with some dimension in this album. It opens up flat, which is so cool. And then you just flip through and you have all these envelopes and these folders. Um, if you planned like me, you have extra tags ready to go and add in. I like putting in these little pieces here and there. You can either save them and use them as embellishments on your pages or add them in for extra notes, places where pictures and things can lie. Um, if I am going through this in advance, I most likely would go ahead and go through and add in some different tags in different places. Um, just for fun, you can kind of pick the side that you want to do. And that way it's preset for journaling. As you start adding things in, you'll be able to just continue Continue to play with that embellishment and the dimension, which is a lot of fun to play with in your journaling and in your envelopes. Um, this is great for like a mini trip. Maybe you're saving like the little business cards, the little mementos. Um, if you are a documenter, then you're probably like me and picking up all the little things all the time to include even like napkins that are embossed with a restaurant's name and things like that. Um, there's all kinds of little tidbits that I save. Um, this would be fun to kind of put little postcards that you had from a trip to be able to include those in here would be a lot of fun. So you can see, you can just fill up these envelopes. You have this right here, so pretty with the yellow on the back. I love that you can embellish the front. It is just a really fun and inexpensive expensive way to create a mini album and also a really fun way to use up a ton of things in your stash. I am digging this colorway. I think it is super pretty. Um, it worked really well that I used a whole collection. So I used a Felicity Jane collection um, that just coordinates everything really easily. So that's just an idea if you are getting started. But you can see really nice with the stitching around it, really put together, pretty strong. Those envelopes are like not coming out. Those are in there um, really well. So that is how you create one of these mini albums. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. Um, if you plan to make one of these, please let me know down below. I would love to hear it and I would love to hear some of your tips and tricks for mini albums as well. I have linked all the supplies that I use down below. Heads up, some of those are affiliate links. It does not cost you any more, but it does go a long way to supporting this channel. And a huge shout out to my scrappy YouTube members. Thank you so much for your support. I think you guys are so great. If you are interested in finding out more about Scrappy YouTube membership, then make sure to click the join button or check the link in the description box below. All right. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.